Today is the 17th of January 2005 with Professor Kim Mayafe. Okay. Well, it's about Catalan translation, especially uh, literary translation. Uh, I mentioned some uh, brief aspects this morning, but, but uh, then in more detail we are going to say it. Uh, Catalan translation has played an important role in the standardization of Catalan language. It has been so in many languages at their beginning. The school of translators in Toledo, for instance, was important in the shaping of Castilian and classical translations influenced La Pleiade for their French model. So in this case, all the uh, in many languages of culture has happened like this. And Catalan had a weight comparable to other languages in the Middle Ages, while it was the court common language and the one used in all sorts of legal and public documents, that is, the language of the royal chancellery, of the administration of Catalonia, Valencia, and Balearic Islands, and beyond, when expanded to Italy and Greece. But with the hegemony of Castilian in the 16th and 17th centuries, and the laws against the use of Catalan from the 18th century on, and especially under Franco's regime, Catalan was reduced to oral familiar circles. Nevertheless, the rich medieval tradition and the revival in the 19th century remained alive as an underlying current of culture together with the oral use that was never interrupted. Catalan was still the first language for the common people. In modern times, the political and social development needed a model, the standard among the varieties of spoken language as any language of culture has through academies, the university, or other influential social forces at work so as to guarantee its transmission and exportation. The school, especially when compulsory education was general, could transmit and export this standard. And of course, the school was a tool of imposing one uh, fixed language and sometimes to, uh, to uh, produce the language shift because uh, some languages were not taken into account. Uh, the private of a Catalan school, we can understand that translation was a tool of standardization, the means of making a fluent, useful language able for all purposes. Some side effects were that translation tended in many cases to domesticating a nustremen rather than foreignizing attitudes. English and French, to talk of powerful languages, can concentrate on the original text and try to reflect it as it is, because English and French have other ways of expressing themselves in all events of public life than in every formal register and through an uninterrupted literature of their own. Nevertheless, the importance of translation is different in France or in Quebec, as we mentioned this morning, and Russian, Czech, and Catalan have got to rely more on translation for their standardization because it was the only uh, written language uh, people uh, had access to. Social linguistics helped explain different academic approaches. Uh, some languages in Europe are probably in danger, even when they are official languages in their respective countries. English is being used more and more for a wider range of purposes and may undermine local language in several fields. Without state, which not only allows languages to develop, but gives them particular encouragement in the fields of education, civil services, media, and public relations, small languages languish and may easily be reduced to uh, folklore or pass away altogether, especially in a world that is going global and in which the number of languages used in the century is liable to be drastically reduced. For if it's true that a language cannot live without speakers, speakers alone cannot guarantee its survival if there is no social and political structure to back it, to render it useful in a competitive world. In different ways, Latin and Esperanto, we mentioned Esperanto as well, illustrate the first point. They have a structure, a solid structure, but no speakers, no more for Latin, and probably the difficulties of Esperanto are because there is a, it's a separate structure, but it's not a, a living language. 
uh, and the lack of social and political support explained the weakening and eventually the loss of many languages when confronted to a language of a state. Provençal, once a powerful language and the first to create a poetry largely influential in Europe, uh, is nowadays scarcely used. Pride in one's language goes hand in hand with personal involvement and experience of life in social environment and also with prospects of future and usefulness. Uh, Catalan uh, fulfills the conditions uh, which, according to many social linguists, are necessary for the survival of our, our language. You have here a relatively large community of speakers. Well, it's uh, about 10 million people, uh, 10 million Catalan speakers, so it's uh, and 60,000 uh, square kilometers, the, the territories uh, where Catalan is, is spoken, larger than other countries in Europe, uh, such as Denmark, Switzerland, or uh, not to Albania, area, Luxembourg, and Iceland have a smaller, pop smaller population. Well, in, in any case, and not to mention uh, Maltese, for instance, or some new uh, countries uh, which are now in the, the European community. So in this case, uh, well, as I say, uh, I just want the rights of a Maltese citizen or a French citizen, for that matter. But anyway, this is, uh, it's, it's not a... Uh, 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 a reduced community. It's a community of a size that uh, is uh, interesting. Uh, Self-awareness as speakers of the language and linguistic loyalty. This is important in some parts of France when you say, what are you talking now? And they say, ah, we talk patois. So the message of the state has reached the speakers and they consider themselves, uh, well, this is not uh, a language uh, worthy of that name, when you are ashamed in a way. Uh, in front of uh, the, the, the external people, then you haven't got this, this awareness of a language, of a language of culture. Um, Catalans have kept their language in as many fields as possible, and uh, it remains a substantial awareness of the historical importance of Catalan. I think that uh, Catalans have been faithful to their language in, in general. Uh, uh, have been loyal, but uh, what uh, social linguistics uh, say, linguistic loyalty, and in general, more or less, a degree. But, but anyway, and it's very difficult to judge uh, in, uh, if all the community has this loyalty. But anyway, it's, it's enough, uh, and uh, you can see it used um, uh, in many, in many uh, places. Uh, three, uh, favorable political, legal, economic, and social context. Well, uh, the Constitution from the Constitution recognizes the Catalan personality, even though it splits it into different uh, communities, the autonomous governments of the Generalitat de Catalunya, the Generalitat Valenciana, the Consell Interinsular Inter de Balearic Islands, in the Balearic Islands. So these are the three communities in Spain. This is not very good for a common standard. Sometimes there are so, uh, some problems. And there are no problems with the Balearic Islands. They accept them. They have uh, always uh, accepted that they spoke Catalan, a variety of Catalan, as, as, as well as, uh, as, uh, as born in Reus, speak a variety of Catalan from Reus and others from Barcelona, but in, in these cases uh, it's uh, the same. In, in Valencia, as you know, when I mentioned, there were some other problems uh, for political reasons. And in, in France, there is, the, there is a, a contact with the university but of course the situation, the, the south of France, the part of Roussillon, uh, where they speak Catalan as well, it was the, the common language, it was part of Catalonia, uh, well, the situation is a bit different, and in, and in Italy is just a, a rest in, in, in Sardinia, in Alghero, uh, but uh, in fact, it's, uh, in, the, in this case, is a bit uh, strange, is a bit, it's not really the, the central community. But anyway, uh, there are some, uh, some. Uh, it's uh, uh, another thing for, for political reasons, but which is, n is not important for the population, but is the fact that in Andorra is the only official language, and Andorra is uh, an independent state. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's, if you exist as a state in the list of states, then you exist uh, for many other purposes as well. 
and uh, little dialectal variation. In fact, uh, there are more differences, say, uh, among, uh, well, among Spanish, not to say uh, Latin America and, 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 and in Spain, but even uh, Cáceres in Extremadura or in, uh, uh, in Huesca, the, the, the Spanish, they speak this uh, dialectically, or, or in, in, in Andalusia, for instance, you may appreciate the differences in language. So, uh, and we are not talking about an Andalusian, or uh, even if they say we speak Andalusian. I mean, it's, it's very uh, normal that say, ah, you, you speak Andalusian in the sense that they refer to the accent, to, the, to some uh, lexical items, uh, etc. But in fact, it's the same language. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, the, the fact that uh, there is a, a little var dialectal variation I mean, uh, you go to Alacan and you understand each other with the people, with the peasants, uh, with uh, sailors, uh, or you go to the Balearic Islands, and at the beginning you may find some different accents, or, but the, the dialectal variation, it, is, it has been traditionally a very, uh, um, the same language, the, 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 even from the, the Middle Ages, because there was the chancery and, and, uh, and the documents, uh, sometimes talking about a writer or a translator, and we thought, oh, it's from Girona, and it was, uh, he was from Valencia, or, or vice versa, because the, the, the model, uh, because of the need to uh, have a, a normal way of uh, communicating, so it was the same in the, the, the office in, in Barcelona or in Valencia or anywhere. A consolidated uh, normative standard. I mention you the work of Pompeu Fabra mainly at the, the beginning of the 20th century. It was uh, accepted. Uh, it was accepted everywhere. And, and, and now the Institut de Studis Catalans, in 1976, there was a royal decree uh, law which uh, uh, that uh, allowed the, the, the authority of an academy to the Institut de Studis Catalans for all the uh, Catalan speaking parts of uh, Spain. Uh, and, and, and then uh, the, the treaties with the universities in, in the Balearic Islands, with the Valencia, so the, the standard uh, from 1932, even in 1932, it was accepted in, in uh, la, uh, Las Normas de Castelló, Castellón, uh, uh, in uh, the, the, this common standard. And the uh, university is uh, used as well. Mm, tradition is a language uh, of culture. Uh, we have talked about the continuous uh, production in, in, in documents, uh, religious documents, translations of the Bible, uh, official documents, laws, uh, decrees, etc. Um, uh, and, and literature, as we have mentioned. Um, with uh, with uh, the, 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 we, we may you may, you must take into account the Jewish and Muslim influence in our lands. Uh, so there is a, a common police, I would say, shared by Catalan among the European diversities and languages, and a structure different from the language of the state, but not so different as to make it learning difficult. Uh, well, it's a Roman language, so it's, it's not very difficult. I mean, it's not difficult for Catalan to learn Spanish. It's not uh, difficult for Spanish who live here, uh, or for, for French people, uh, for Italian people after a time, I mean, well, uh, uh, Romanian people, to, to see some uh, similarities. Uh, so it's not uh, ridiculous. It's not the same as me, so it's not something. Or as Basque, for instance. Basque, which is a, a, a language of a completely different roots. In this case, that is an added difficulty to uh, uh, enter into the, the, the language. Well, uh, this is, is the view. In this case, we may be uh, reasonably optimistic as to the survival of Catalan's language with some force in, in the European context. And, and the need for translation uh, 
is uh, well, is clearly seen. Uh, how could we read Homer and Virgil, Shakespeare and Cervantes, Proust, Goethe and the Arabian Nights? There are great books in more languages that, than we can reasonably be expected to master. But it's not only a question of personal pleasure or learning. Embodying foreign masterpieces in our language is a way of strengthening it or making it able to express uh, the art um, of making it respe respectable among other languages of culture. Well, uh, the main lines of this history, writers translated uh, to Catalan in the Middle Ages, this 2-1 uh, means the, the classics. So there was a, a tradition, not only these writers, but I have stressed some names, uh, and I, I would like now to talk about it uh, rather than, than, than uh, talking too much. But uh, Titus Livius, Ovid, Seneca, uh, so the, the classical writers were um, um, translated the people, the kings were interested in the uh, history of the Greeks and they were the, they uh, mixed the Alexander no, Alexander is not only a film by Oliver Stone but it was uh, the, 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 the adventures of Alexander of literature treated the, the, the the hero, the, the Greek hero at that time, but uh, King Arthur's and the Round Table, which is tied to it in a way, um, is known uh, through translations uh, mainly from the French. Boccaccio's Corbaccio was translated in 1397, the Cameron in 1429, Dante's Commedia 1429 as well, in verse, in tercets. Uh, very, very interesting to compare this translation because uh, the, uh, they are not. It's, it's different the translation of Dante's Commedia, for instance, which is a literal translation, an inverse, uh, literal, more or less, which means that there are some Italian words came into Catalan for literature. Uh, in this translation, oh, in the, the Cameron, there is another view. Uh, it was done by the monks of San Cugat near Barcelona, and uh, and then they substitute the songs. They substitute the songs of uh, the Italian by Catalan songs of the epoch. So in this case, they do a sort of uh, adaptation, and, and it's interesting to know. See, yes. Oh yeah, no, no. That, that, uh, there was uh, it was not a problem. In fact, the, uh, even in it's curious because from our point of view, maybe a bit uh, strange. Well, I remember that um, uh, Boccaccio was uh, a canon, was uh, an ecclesiastic man. Uh, but anyway, you you could be a believer and at the same time be very critical uh, against the. Uh, and, and in Catalonia was was uh, was seen as well. There is a moment. There is a moment uh, when the Franciscans, for instance, there are some orders. One thing: uh, the monks, the monks uh, in monasteries. So apart from from people, and in the, the name of the rose by Umberto Eco, you see, uh, for instance, Ubertino di Casale uh, had a great influence in in Catalonia, uh, and, and he was well known. And uh, some some writers and, and doctors, uh, well, Ramon Llull had uh, was influential as well. So one thing was the, the there was there was no problem in some. In some uh, epochs, you could translate it, and, and the anti clericalism was something uh, quite different from the anti religion. I mean, you, you could not criticize God or, or doubt about the dogma, but you could criticize I mean, the, 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 the fights uh, uh, among um, uh, clerks and, and Dominicans and Franciscans and so on. It was terrible, so they could uh, kill each other, uh, and it was, uh, it was not a problem in this case. And uh, well, you, you have this the, in this, this tradition. But what is important in the translation? Well, uh, it, it's interesting this this point. But at that time, anti-clericalism was accepted at some at some epochs, and and of course 
the, up to a certain point. I mean, you, you couldn't do everything you liked. But uh, the, the interesting thing is the point of view of, of the translator. They are the two very good translations and, 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 and worthy of studying them. And, and Dante's Commedia is, is a, a very literalistic view and, and poetical view. They, they try to give a, a Commedia uh, to be... To be uh, uh, read as uh, Italians did, and, 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 and the same rhymes and, and so on. And in El uh, Decameron, the, the stories are the same, but uh, and they don't. Uh, I mean, they are so crude as uh, as they are in Italian. I mean, um, as far as I know, I mean, I haven't read it all, but uh, some some parts. Uh, and um, but the, the, the curious thing is this adaptation of some songs. Well, they they probably felt that the songs were foreign. And, and, and then they found some equivalent songs or something which was good for the occasion in, in the translation. Uh, but um, on Ruiz de Corella, Ruiz de Corella, uh, and the Valenciana prose, the Valencian prose, was very important in the 14th, 15th century, the 15th century, and uh, it created a model, created a standard for literary uh, purposes, uh, and mainly based on translations. Uh, so it was rather let. Latin, uh, Latin, the Catalan, uh, it's uh, very uh, flourishing, uh, rather the, the hyperbaton, the, the difference of the order and, and this kind of thing. But anyway, he created a style which was adopted by many writers in, in Valencia, which in the 15th century was very important, was the most important of the Catalan countries and the influence uh, in Rome, for instance, or in, uh, in, in Spain as well. Well, Tutu is uh, this uh, one thing. Dante's Commedia, apart from the 1429 translation, is to show, this point is to show how uh, we haven't got enough with one translation. Uh, this translation in 1429. But then some fragmentary versions. Narcisse Bardegay Calis in 1921. Llorenç Balanzó i Pons, 1923-24, another version of the uh, Comedia. Josep Maria de Sagarra, 1947-1952, a complete version in verse, superb version. I think it's, uh, it's extraordinary in tercets as well. And recently, in the uh, Joan Francesc Mira, uh, wrote uh, another Comedia. He is Valencian. Of course, you read the translation of Sagara or uh, of Mira, uh, regardless of their uh, territorial description. I mean, you like one more or, or, or less, but anyway, there are two translations of the Commedia in, in Catalan, even if there are some little uh, uh, choosing of words or something like this. But anyway, uh, we have this uh, this. Um, quantity of translations of the Comedia, 40 Catalan translators of Shakespeare, and for Spar, Maggi Moreri, Galicia, you can see some names. Uh, most of them are interesting writers as well, not only translators. And, uh, and then uh, Amforspar, for instance, translated uh, King's, uh, King Lear's um, into the Catalan of the 15th century. Uh, because he thought, well, it was uh, it was an epoch of uh, when Catalan was uh, very mature, and so it was a Catalan uh, near to the Shakespeare's uh, English in a way, in epoch, and 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 uh, lots of notes. So we have a, a, a translation. But now we could uh, criticize it in many ways. But anyway, it was uh, an effort at the time. It was in 1920s, and. Uh, with uh, with uh, a lot of notes on King uh, King Lear, and uh, and in fact creates uh, 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 according to the Catalan syntax of the 15th, for instance, and the vocabulary and so on. So this kind of translation impossible to put on the stage, of course, but very interesting as a as a. As a tr uh, as a tradition of translation, as a sort of translation, or uh, Josep Maria Sagarra, uh, whose translations are currently put on the stage, even now, uh, when Shakespeare in Catalan is represented. But uh, the most uh, modern translations are by Salvador Oliva. Eduardo Mendoza has translated some words by Shakespeare, or Joan Sallén, 
etc. Carme Montoriol, Joan Triadú, Gerard Vergés, these three, uh, uh, apart from Salvador Oliva, all four have translated the sonnets, Shakespeare sonnets. So, several versions, sometimes in ten syllables, sometimes in, in twelve syllables. Uh, another thing which is, uh, is seen in translation is if, if the, the mm, English verse uh, sounds better in ten syllables, literally uh, the ten syllables of the English original or in twelve syllables. The, the Roman's language is not only Catalan but Spanish more than Catalan uh, tend to uh, make it breath. And, and then the 12 syllables line uh, is, uh, is easier to express all the contents of the, of the line sometimes. But anyway, that, that, that means that uh, these trans, uh, translation problems uh, arise from the translation. Uh, or Cervantes Don Quixote, that's curious, as I, I said, because the, the, the thing they like is to be able, well, Catalan is able to translate anything, so then why not uh, the Quixote? The Quixote is a masterpiece of world literature, so let, uh, let's have it in Catalan as well, even if we can read it. But it's curious because there is the translation by Eduardo Tamaro, 1882-1883, as, as soon as that, Antoni Bulbena Tuzel in 1891, Ildefons Rullan, 1905-06, or Joaquim Sivera, the last one, in 1961, 1969, apart from 27 selections from the novel. Well, for, from a novel written in Spanish, everybody knows and, and can read in Spanish, uh, it's important, it's strange how this, this uh, uh, interest in translating these kind of works. Or some, uh, uh, Josep Pini Soler is interesting because translated between 1910 and 1921, Erasmus, Maria Encomian, Thomas Utopia, Joan Luis Vivas' Dialogi, the Buddhist Phila Biblon, and Machiavelli's Il Principe. It was the, the Renaissance uh, works, masterpieces, translated by one writer from Tarragona, in this case, uh, a novelist himself, and, um, of, of some note. Uh, so this is the uh, interest in, in uh, symbolical works of art, masterpieces of literature, uh, not only once, but sometimes have they, they have been translated more than once. And two, three is, well, a small selection of other writers translated, Goethe, Manzoni, Wagner, Dickens, Mark Twain, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, uh, and from the, the 20th century, Joyce, Proust, Kafka, Henry Miller, uh, etc. And then it's important the, the Greek and Latin classics, the Colleccio Bernard Medje, uh, uh, that uh, from, from Greek and, and Latin, Ovid, uh, the, the tragics, uh, Aristotle, Plato, were uh, translated into Catalan in a very good uh, translation, face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, notes, uh, a critical edition uh, comparable to other translation. As I, as I mentioned to somebody this morning, uh, Professor Jose Maria Valverde, translator of uh, Ulysses and, 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 and Shakespeare, by the way, but uh, he learned Catalan to read the Greeks because uh, uh, were more accessible to him in Catalan than in Greek, of course, and then uh, there were good translations of the uh, Poetica uh, by Aristotle, for instance, in Catalan, in the Colleccio Bardan Medje. It still continues, it has uh, been, uh, uh, goes on publishing uh, things, and, and one, a very good uh, translator and a poet himself was Carla Riva, Carla Riva translated from nine languages, and he supervised all the translations, not only not only of uh, Bernard Medje, but uh, uh, he translated. Uh, and another thing which is interesting in this uh, this attitude of translators, not only as university people, he was a university professor and so on, but and translated in the Bernard Medje, but uh, he could translate. Uh, 
mm, children's stories, for instance, because, well, children needed uh, to read in Catalan, so he translated uh, Babar, the adventures of Babar, the, the elephant. I don't know if you have these adventures of, uh, of Babar, or uh, some, uh, uh, well, Edgar Allan Poe, some, some stories uh, by Edgar Allan Poe, or other mm, not uh, so powerful masterpieces of the Greeks. Uh, two versions of the Odyssey, it was the inverse, and adapting adapting the the meters, the Greek meters into Catalan. And, and so there is, is there is a lot, uh, there are a lot of studies uh, on on how to uh, adapt the, the 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 Greek poetry to Catalan uh, possibilities and uh, the, the examiner and, and lots of studies about this uh, and, uh, and translation theory in, uh, in the 19th and 20th century Fabre Cardona in the 18th century from Menorca Cesar Augusto Jordana or Carla Riva uh, they didn't only uh, they did not only um, translate many works but they had some theory they were well uh, literal or equivalence uh, literality or equivalence uh, the sense uh, well all these questions about uh, uh, foreignizing and domesticating and what is interesting and and uh, and generally for poetry there are several possibilities because poetry is more minority uh, minority activity novels for instance uh, is domesticating it's something that people must uh, read as, as, a, as a Catalan novel and theatre as well probably novels and theatre would be the more the uh, 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 Catalan translations. I mean, being faithful, eh? being faithful, being, being translations, not adaptations. Sometimes were adaptations. Uh, well, uh, at the beginning of the century, uh, for instance, Othello, Othello was uh, Othello, the Moor of, and, and they set the, the village where they were representing the, the, the play. Eh? So we have Othello, uh, the Moor of Valencia, Othello, the Moor of Terrassa, Othello. So in any, in any village they went and, and, and uh, represented uh, Othello. Then they knew some anecdotes on, on the village and so on. They introduced uh, some, well, this kind of adaptation the pastiche and, uh, from French uh, plays. It was very usual at the beginning of the century. But I am, I am uh, speaking of real translations. That is the attitude where in poetry you find the, a, a wider range of approaching translating, translation and in, in novel or, or in, in theater uh, uh, trying to uh, create a, a model for the, the language of theater, for instance. So, so uh, you, you have, uh, they have in, in mind to create this standard, artistic uh, standard in a way. And, and well, the, the, the influence of Sagarra, for instance, or Riva, or these uh, writers is, uh, has been important. Yes. 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 But then it's, a, it's not really a translation. It's a, sometimes they were. Uh, well, the first translations of Shakespeare, anyway, there are several ways of uh, of uh, facing them. For the neoclassical, uh, I mean, sometimes they reduce Shakespeare to the unitist theory of the French. Uh, and uh, so the unity of place, the unity of action, and, and so they, they reduce him. The first translations into Spanish or into Catalan as well, but it, uh, uh, they really are adaptations rather than translations purely because they they adapt in some parts. But then there is a popular a popular. Uh, let me let me let me put an example. Um, you know Cantinflas. Cantinflas is a comic, a Mexican comic, uh, Mario Moreno, Cantinflas. Well, it's, it's a comic. And, and, and Romeo and Juliet, for instance, Romeo and Juliet was a film made by him. Uh, and it's, it's Romeo and Juliet, of course, but that is a parody. So the genre of the parody 
was very uh, usual. I, I compare that in films because nowadays we can see that in films sometimes. Eh? And, and Yeah. Yes. 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 Quite. Quite. But, but in this case, uh, it, they were not translations. That is why I said that you, you cannot consider them translations because it was uh, an adaptation. But uh, and and most of the times for for comical reasons. Uh, I mean, you have some some. Uh, but even even from Catalan, some, some works from Catalan. La, uh, la, 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 uh, I, uh, la, there is a version. There is a Catalan version of Romeo and Juliet, but it's a version by, made by Victor Balaguer, Zeulas Espusallas de la Morta, the wedding of the dead woman, uh, because well, they, 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 in fact, when they are, uh, the, but Las Espusallas de la Morta. Then another one writes a, 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 a play which is called that's called la, Las Ventallas de la Porta nothing to do with the original. It's because of the sound and people recognize that this is a parody of Les Espusalles de la Morta, in this case it's Les Ventalles de la Porta, which means the, the, the doors of a house. Yeah? The, the Porta is the doors. And, and in this case, it's, it's just a parody of this. But people recognize. The Quichot has been parody. Uh, uh, Don Juan. Don Juan, uh, we have a lot of parodies of Don Juan. Comical. Uh, people know the Don Juan by Zorilla in our case, for instance, and then they see this Don Juan Tanorio uh, as a parody of this. So there were many parodies in theater. Theater was not a noble art sometimes. It was just something for, for the people, but it was the, the I don't know, the, a very, very simple uh, entertainment. Eh? So apart from this, which is interesting to study and how they elaborate, re-elaborate, they treat the foreigner, but, but sometimes maybe, the, in this case, the Moor of Valencia, but uh, the Moors are seen as foreigners at the time, in the 20th century, there are uh, no more Moors in Valencia, they were, there were Moors in the 15th and 16th century, uh, till they were uh, in, in the, in the in the 16th, in the 17th century, I think they were uh, exposed, uh, they were uh, thrown away from from Valencia. Precisely, it was, it was important because they were working here and there was a crisis. But 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 then uh, it's 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 it doesn't it doesn't matter because it's not uh, uh, it's not um, uh, serious. It's not a serious work. But but it's interesting to see all these trends, all these currents of parodies uh, or uh, re-elaborations of uh, classical plays uh, adapted to the circumstances. Well, in fact, West Side the Story is an adaptation of uh, Romeo and Juliet, and, and we have got uh, adaptations uh, by Leonardo DiCaprio, I think one of these is a modern, uh, uh, or being a gang, being uh, gangs in, in, in New York or something. Uh, well, is it Romeo and Juliet? Well, we cannot say it's Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. It's an adaptation by the director or so on. And, and, uh, but uh, it's interesting because it relies on the knowledge people have of the play, of the original play, in some way, in some way, even if, 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 if they don't say it. But, uh, uh, well, it's very, it's very interesting how it operates. Uh, but I can see in in uh, in a modern magazine, for instance, rebel without uh, rebel with a cause. That's a title of an article which doesn't doesn't tell us about the film by Nicholas Ray and James Dean, but uh, something about oh uh, there was. Uh, a silver wedding, a silver wedding, and a funeral. Well, if you find this title, it's because there is a film which is called Four Weddings and Funeral. 
they don't say anything about the, the, the film. The, the silver wedding is the silver wedding of the marathon in New York, and uh, the, precisely that year the founder was dead. And that is, the, and that is what the, the, the notice says. But the title, the line, has, uh, is an echo of uh, literary, we could say, uh, in this case, uh, a, movie, a movie quotation, which people more or less uh, accept as, as such. Uh, well, uh, I don't know, I remember uh, many, many, many titles of these. You can, you can find uh, Sound and Fury on the Right. Well, Sound and Fury on the Right is the title of a, of a newspaper, which, uh, well, it, it's, it's a Shakespearean echo and, and Faulkner's uh, uh, novel. And, and you don't expect people uh, that read this uh, article to know Shakespeare. Or, or, but but funny, it's funny to see that they are present in, in many ways in, in titles, for instance, or, or in uh, when you're trying to sell a, a Frigidaire. Or, I don't know, this, and sometimes you find a quotation or something which uh, uh, is an echo of a literary or philosophical uh, thing. Well, anyway, coming back to this, there were many parodies, but this is a tendency which is interesting as well to compare. But another thing is the translation. And the translation tried to set, uh, being faithful, being a translation, being faithful to Shakespeare or to Moliere or, or to Bertolt Brecht more recently, etc. But they tried to make a correct Catalan, to express Moliere or Shakespeare or Bertolt Brecht or Durand-Matt in a correct Catalan. That is the is the thing I say that uh, probably is more uh, visible in theater than in uh, in the other uh, the, or in novels and in theater than in poetry where you you find this but then you may be more foreignizing if you are interested in seeing how it works in in English or in French or in Chinese uh, sometimes some experiments on, on haikus and and tankas uh, into Catalan and, and which uh, are and other other things and um, some writers translated from Catalan. Well, Ramon Llull, Ximenis, Ausias Marjo, Nat Martorell from the Middle Ages, uh, Jacint Verdaguer, Verdaguer, Angel Guimarà, Jacint Verdaguer, The Atlantis, for instance, was translated into, uh, I don't know, uh, some, uh, some languages. Um, and uh, Carla Riba, some names for you to, to see, uh, at least to see the names which have been translated from Catalan into other languages. Or oh, modern, Kim Munzo, Isabel Clara Simó, Jesus Moncada, Francesc Parceris, as they are alive, and they are uh, 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 still translated. According to uh, bibliographical research sponsored by the Fundació Enciclopèdia Catalana, at least 1,350 literary translations into Catalan, into Catalan were published in book form between the beginning of the 19th century, Renaissance, and 1939. So it means that it was a period where translations, apart from some poems in magazines or so, but in, in, form of, in book form, it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad for a language uh, that had been uh, for some centuries without uh, public uh, uh, importance. Uh, and... Uh, then there were some problems with translations, but in the, the first 60 titles in the 70s of a collection of novel included 52 translations. So, uh, 52 translations of uh, 60, uh, 60 titles meant that translations were important, then not so many. And, uh, and translations from Catalan has produced some uh, literature and uh, according to the some figures, according to a UNESCO report, Catalan was the tenth most translated language between 1988 and 1994. So some, uh, it was translated. Not always uh, having a success of, uh, uh, I mean, for, for the general public. Mm, as you know, in translation, sometimes the the bad thing about translation is that the universities translate it uh, sometimes and then they are in magazines but of uh, 
very small uh, circulation. So uh, the important thing is for the normal publishers to, to, to publish novels and so on. So the, recently going to Guadalajara, the, 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 the Feria del Libro the, in Guadalajara, where Catalan culture was invited this year, well, this is an, is an important fact for Catalan literature to be sold uh, in normal publishers, for instance, or if it's uh, invited in Frankfurt, it seems that it will be invited in future. People are working for this. So this is a good, a good policy for uh, exporting uh, translations, uh, exporting Catalan literature and translations from this literature. Well, uh, I think it's, it's enough. I would like you to 